हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू एलियो अपडेट आज एलियो अपडेट में हम लोग एग्जाम बूस्टर्स स्टार्ट करने वाले हैं फॉर बी कॉम सिक्स सेमेस्टर फॉर द सब्जेक्ट ए बी एस स्टैटस अप्लाइड एंड बिजनेस स्टैटिस्टिक्स इस वीडियो में हम लोग यूनिट वन के एग्जाम बूस्टर्स के बारे में डिस्कस करेंगे दीज एग्जाम बूस्टर्स आर क्वाइट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर सेमेस्टर एग्जाम सो प्लीज डू प्रिपेयर दैम एंड डू डाउनलोड आर मोबाइल ऐप subscribe to our channel and uh, go through these uh, pdf files which we are providing you on our app so that you can ace your exams now starting with the very first question the first question is the sdrd is located at ab sdrd kya hai sdrd stands for survey design and research division okay sdrd means survey design and research division अब ये सर्वे डिजाइन एंड रिसर्च डिविजन इंडिया में कहाँ लोकेटेड है सो योर ऑप्शन आर न्यू डेली कोलकाता बैंगलोर एंड मुंबई सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए न्यू डेली योर एस डी आर डी और सर्वे डिजाइन रिसर्च डिविजन इज लोकेटेड एट न्यू डेली मूविंग ऑन टू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द मेन टास्क ऑफ नाउ दिस क्वेश्चन इज अबेट मिस प्रिंटेड दिस Data processing division should have been the blank space, but the as the question says, the main task of the data processing division or DPD is to convert a huge volume of raw data into a concluding form of key indicators. Now this is the answer itself. Okay, from the given uh, options, that is uh, SDRD or Survey Design and Research Division, Data Processing Division. Field Operations Division and Coordination and Publication Division. These are the options which were provided to you. The question should have been the main task of blank space is to convert a huge volume of raw data into a concluding form of key indicators. Your answer then would have been Data Processing Division or DPD. Now what happens is DPD. converts a huge volume of raw data into concluding form of key indicators all right and uh, with the help of this major decisions are taken now moving on to next question the third question is the office of the coordination and publication division is located at now aapka ye jo cpd hai that is office of कोऑर्डिनेशन एंड पब्लिक डिविजन वो कहाँ पे लोकेटेड है सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज फ्रॉम अमंग द क्वेश्चन ऑप्शन द ऑप्शन आर डेली मुंबई बैंगलोर एंड जयपुर द करेक्ट आंसर इज डेली आपका ऑफिस ऑफ कोऑर्डिनेशन एंड पब्लिक डिविजन डेली में लोकेटेड है ऑल राइट द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज द Central Statistics Office or CSO in the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation is responsible for the compilation of ab jo aapka CSO hai that is Central Statistics Office wo kis cheez ke compilation ke liye responsible hai your options are option A National Accounts Statistics or NAS option B Indian Statistical System option c statistical data in option d none of these so the correct answer is option a that is national accounts statistics nas why because the central statistics office or cso okay the central statistics office or cso in the ministry of statistics program and implementation is primarily responsible for the compilation of national accounts statistics therefore the correct answer is option a national account statistics now where is the cso located so the central statistics office in india is located at delhi ओके द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए दिल्ली आपका सीएसओ का जो ऑफिस है वो दिल्ली में लोकेटेड है मूविंग ऑन टू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट इज द डैश अ ब्लैंक इज अ वेल नोन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ रिसर्च टीचिंग एंड एप्लीकेशन ऑफ स्टैटिस्टिक्स नेचुरल साइंसेस एंड सोशल साइंसेस 
your given options are option A Indian Statistical Institute option B NSSO option C ASO and option D CSO for for the question which institute is well known for research teaching and application of statistics natural sciences and social sciences so the correct answer is option A that is Indian Statistical Institute or ISI The Indian Statistical Institute is a well-known institute that is involved in research, teaching and the application of statistical sciences, natural sciences and social sciences. So the correct answer is ISI that is Indian Statistical Institute. Moving on to next question. GDP equals to. Ab GDP kya hai and what does GDP equals to? So, your options are GDP at MP minus net indirect taxes. Option B, GDP at FC plus net indirect taxes. Option C, GDP at FC plus subsidies. And option D, GDP at FC minus indirect taxes. So, the correct answer is option D. That is GDP at FC minus indirect taxes. Now what is GDP? GDP stands for Gross Domestic Product which is a measure of total value of goods and services produced within a country's borders during a specific period of time. Alright, GDP se kya hota hai ki aapke country mein particular time period mein jitne bhi goods and services produce huye hai unka total value Pata chalta hai from GDP that means gross domestic product. The commonly used formula for GDP is GDP equals to GDP at FC minus indirect taxes. Yahan pe GDP at FC ka kya matlab hai? Now GDP at FC means GDP that is gross domestic product at factor cost. FC stands for factor cost all right which represents the total income generated from the production of goods and services gdp at factor cost aapka jo total income generate hota hai use represent karte hain goods and services ke production se indirect taxes jaise ki sales tax ho gaya vat ho gaya etc ye sari cheeze jo hoti hain aapke indirect taxes ko gdp se minus kiya jata hai ya सप्रैक्ट किया जाता है एट फैक्टर कॉस्ट टू अराइव एट जीडीपी दिस इज बिकॉज इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस आर कंसिडर्ड पार्ट ऑफ द फाइनल प्राइसेस पेड बाय द कंज्यूमर्स एंड द नीड टू बी डिडक्टेड टू ऑप्टेन द वैल्यू ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विस प्रोड्यूस्ड ओके सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज सपोज टू बी डी दैट इज ऑप्शन डी Moving on to uh, next question, NDP at FC equals to. Now, what does NDP at FC equals to? So, your given options are option A, GDP at FC minus indirect taxes. Option B, GDP at FC minus depreciation. Option C, GDP at FC plus economic subsidy. And option D, all of these. So, here the correct answer is option B. That is GDP at FC minus depreciation so ndp at fc equals to gdp at fc minus depreciation now what is ndp ndp stands for net domestic product gdp aapka gross domestic product mein aa raha tha now ndp means net domestic product which is a measure of net value of goods and services produced within a country's border during a specific period gdp gross domestic product tha जो ग्रॉस वैल्यू ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज प्रोड्यूस्ड बताता था विद इन अ कंट्रीज बॉर्डर ड्यूरिंग अ पर्टिकुलर और स्पेसिफाइड पीरियड एनडीपी क्या करता है एनडीपी नेट डोमेस्टिक प्रोडक्ट होता है जो आपकी नेट वैल्यू ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज प्रोड्यूस ड्यूरिंग कंट्रीज बॉर्डर केवन अंडर अ स्पेसिफिक टाइम पीरियड इट टेक्स इन टू अकाउंट द डेप्रिसिएशन टू वेयर एंड चेयर ऑफ कैपिटल गुड्स यूज इन द प्रोडक्शन प्रोसेस NDP में आपका जो डेप्रिसिएशन uh, होता है कैपिटल गुड्स का जिन्हें हम प्रोडक्शन प्रोसेस में यूज करते हैं 
उनको काउंट किया जाता है उस डेप्रिसिएशन को काउंट किया जाता है इसी वजह से जो एन का फॉर्मूला है दैट गोज एस एन डी पी एट एफ सी इक्वल्स टू जी डी पी एट एफ सी माइनस डेप्रिसिएशन डेप्रिसिएशन क्या होता है इट रिप्रेजेंट्स द रिडक्शन इन द वैल्यू ऑफ कैपिटल गुड्स ड्यू टू द यूज ओवर टाइम जैसे जैसे आप कैपिटल गुड्स को यूज करते जाते हैं उनकी वैल्यू गिरती जाती है ओके okay? जैसे कोई मशीनरी है वो मशीनरी दो में पचास हजार की खरीदी गई थी 2022 में उसकी वैल्यू पंद्रह हजार या बीस हजार ही बचेगी ड्यू टू डेप्रिसिएशन ऑल राइट दैट इज वाई डेप्रिसिएशन इज सप्रैक्टेड फ्रॉम जी डी पी एट एफ सी टू ऑप्टेन एन डी पी एट एफ सी विच प्रोवाइड्स अ मेशर ऑफ द नेट आउटपुट जनरेटेड आफ्टर अकाउंटिंग फॉर कैपिटल डेप्रिसिएशन so the correct answer is option b that is ndp at fc equals to gdp at fc minus depreciation moving on to next question what is nnp at fc equals to now nnp kya hai nnp at fc stands for net national product at factor cost nnp means net national product at factor cost so what is nnp at factor cost equals to your options are GNP minus depreciation, NNP at factor cost plus economic subsidy minus indirect taxes. Option C, NDP at factor cost plus net factor income from abroad. And option D, all of these. So the correct answer is option D. That is all of these. NNP at FC stands for all the given options. Okay, whether it's option A, B, or C. now nnp at factor cost is a measure of net value of goods and services produced by country's residents within its borders ndp kya tha it was net domestic product that is the measure of value of net goods and services net value of goods and services produced within a country's border in a given period of time but nnp is net national product which is the measure of net value of goods and services which are produced by country's resident jo country ke residents hote hain wo jin goods and services ko produce karte hain unka value hota hai accounting for depreciation and net factor income from abroad the formula for calculating nnp at fc can be derived using different approaches all of which are included in the options provided in sabhi options ke through हम लोग एन एन पी एट फैक्टर कॉस्ट को कैलकुलेट कर सकते हैं सबसे पहले बात करते हैं जी एन पी माइनस डेप्रिसिएशन दैट इज एन एन पी एट फैक्टर कॉस्ट इक्वल्स टू जी एन पी माइनस डेप्रिसिएशन नाउ नेट नेशनल प्रोडक्ट और एन एन पी कैन बी कैलकुलेटेड बाय सब्रैक्टिंग डेप्रिसिएशन फ्रॉम ग्रॉस नेशनल प्रोडक्ट दैट इज जी एन पी जी एन पी रिप्रेजेंट्स द टोटल वैल्यू ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विस प्रोड्यूस्ड बाई कंट्रीज रेसिडेंट इंक्लूडिंग इनकम अर्न फ्रॉम अब्रॉड सो ऑप्शन ए कैन ऑल्सो बी यूज मूविंग ऑन टू ऑप्शन बी दैट इज एन एन पी एट फैक्टर कॉस्ट प्लस इकोनॉमिक सब्सिडी माइनस इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस नाउ एन एन पी एट फैक्टर कॉस्ट कैन बी ऑप्टेन बाई एडिंग इकोनॉमिक सब्सिडीज इन सप्रैक्टिंग इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस फ्रॉम द सेम Economic subsidies are provided to businessmen to reduce production cost, and indirect taxes are taxes levied on goods and services. So, NNP at factor cost equals to NNP at factor cost plus economic subsidy minus indirect taxes. Now, moving on to third option, that is option C, NDP at factor cost plus net factor income from abroad. Now NNP at FC can also be calculated by adding net domestic product, that is NDP, at factor cost with net factor income from abroad. Net factor income from abroad can include what? It includes the income earned by countries resident from their investments or work in foreign countries. जब कोई भी country के residents किसी foreign country में invest करते हैं या कोई income earn करते हैं foreign country से तो उसे हम लोग नेट फैक्टर इनकम फ्रॉम अब्रॉड के तौर पे मानते हैं ऑल राइट 
income from abroad. Now, this income from abroad, is we have minus karte, income earned by foreign residents within the country. Alright, so this is the third option. All of these options can be used to calculate NNP at factor cost. So, the correct answer is option D. That is all of these. Moving on to next question. Which of the following methods of measuring national income? Now, आपके पास कुछ ऑप्शंस दे रखे हैं इनमें से कौन सा मेथड है जिसे हम लोग यूज करते हैं फॉर कैलकुलेशन ऑफ नेशनल इनकम योर ऑप्शंस आर इनकम मेथड प्रोडक्शन मेथड एक्सपेंडिचर मेथड एंड ऑप्शन डी ऑल ऑफ दीस द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी ऑल ऑफ दीस आप इनकम मेथड भी यूज कर सकते हैं प्रोडक्शन मेथड एंड एक्सपेंडिचर मेथड भी यूज कर सकते हैं फॉर द पर्पस ऑफ मेजरिंग नेशनल इनकम ऑफ अ कंट्री Now, national income can be measured using multiple methods, which are commonly referred to as income method, production, and expenditure method. Each method dif uh, provides different perspective on how national income is calculated. बात करते हैं सबसे पहले income method की. Now, income method. Under this method, income method measures national income by summing up all the incomes earned by individuals, a factor of production in an economy. एक इकोनॉमी में जितनी भी इनकम अर्न हो रही है उन सब का टोटल सम अप करके या फैक्टर ऑफ प्रोडक्शन का सम अप करके आप इस मेथड के थ्रू नेशनल इनकम निकाल सकते हैं इट इंक्लूड्स वेजेस सैलरीज प्रॉफिट्स रेंट इंटरेस्ट यानी किसी भी टाइप का इनकम होगा उसे इस मेथड में इंक्लूड किया जाएगा मूविंग ऑन टू प्रोडक्शन मेथड दिस मेथड कैलकुलेट्स नेशनल इनकम बाय एडिंग अप द वैल्यू ऑफ ऑल गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज प्रोड्यूस्ड विद इन द इकोनॉमी ड्यूरिंग अ स्पेसिफिक पीरियड ऑफ टाइम इट टेक्स इनटू अकाउंट द वैल्यू एडेड एट ईच स्टेज ऑफ प्रोडक्शन एंड कंसीडर्स फैक्टर्स सच एज इंटरमीडिएट कंजम्पशन एंड डिप्रीसिएशन सो प्रोडक्शन मेथड में इस वे में आप इनकम कैलकुलेट करते हैं योर नेशनल इनकम नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट एक्सपेंडिचर मेथड This method measures national income by summing up all the expenses. Okay. Made on goods and services within an economy during a specific period of time. यानी वो जो वो सारे expenses जो goods and services के production पे या उनके ऊपर खर्च किए गए हैं एक particular country में during a specific period of time वो सारे expenditure method में sum up किए जाते हैं It includes consumption expenditure, investment expenditure, government expenditure, and net exports. That is exports minus imports. जब आप exports में से imports को minus करते हैं, तब आपको आपकी net exports मिलती हैं. And these net exports are included in expenditure method. So all these three methods provide different approaches to estimating national income. But when implemented correctly, they should yield the same result. यानी आप इन तीनों में से चाहे कोई भी एक method लगा लीजिए या तीनों ही methods लगा लीजिए अगर आपने सही way में implementation किया है इन methods का तो हर method से आपको same ही answer मिलेगा आपके national income के regarding. There will be no deviation in the results taken from these or derived from these particular methods. Therefore, the correct answer. is all of these methods are used to measure national income now moving on to the next question why are intermediate goods not included while measuring national income ab national income ke measurement mein hum log intermediate goods ko kyun avoid karte hain your options are option a to avoid double accounting option b to decrease income in national income option c intermediate goods are not not goods in option d all of these so the correct answer is option a to avoid double accounting intermediate goods are not included while measuring national income to avoid double accounting including the value of intermediate goods in the calculation of national income would result in double accounting problem and due to double accounting there will be overall problem in calculating the national income intermediate goods are those goods that are used up for transform in the production process to create final goods they are not sold directly to the consumers aapke intermediate goods ko directly consumer ko nahi sold kiya jata hai sell kiya jata hai unko use kiya jata hai jinse final products bante hain 
और वो फाइनल प्रोडक्ट आपका कंज्यूमर कंज्यूम करता है सिंस द वैल्यू ऑफ इंटरमीडिएट गुड्स इज ऑलरेडी अकाउंटेड फॉर इन द फाइनल गुड्स प्रोड्यूस्ड इंक्लूडिंग देम सेपरेटली इन द मेजरमेंट ऑफ नेशनल इनकम वुड लीड टू एन ओवर एस्टिमेशन ऑफ टोटल वैल्यू ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज इन द इकोनॉमी अब आपने कोई एक फाइनल गुड बनाया है फॉर एग्जाम्पल आपने मान लीजिए आपने ए सी खरीदा ए सी इज अ फाइनल गुड विच यू हैव कंज्यूम्ड बट ए सी में जो पार्ट्स लगे हैं जिसकी वजह से ए सी बनाए वो जो पार्ट्स होते हैं दो ज्यादा इंटरमीडिएट गुड्स उन इंटरमीडिएट गुड्स का प्राइस ऑलरेडी आपके फाइनल प्रोडक्ट के प्राइस में इंक्लूडेड है सो so, अगर हम इंटरमीडिएट गुड्स का प्राइस अलग से इंक्लूड करें एंड देन फाइनल गुड का प्राइस इंक्लूड करें तो यहाँ से डबल अकाउंटिंग का प्रॉब्लम आ जाएगा बिकॉज द प्राइस ऑफ द इंटरमीडिएट गुड्स इज ऑलरेडी इंक्लूडेड इन द प्राइस ऑफ द फाइनल गुड वी डू नॉट इंक्लूड इंटरमीडिएट गुड्स वाइल मेजरिंग नेशनल इनकम टू अवॉइड डबल अकाउंटिंग ऑफ द सेम दस टू अवॉइड दिस ओवर एस्टिमेशन एंड टू इंश्योर एक्ट मेजर ऑफ नेशनल इनकम ओनली द वैल्यू ऑफ फाइनल गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस इज कंसिडर्ड इन द कैलकुलेशन by excluding intermediate goods double accounting is avoided and the national income is measured more accurately now next question that we have is who had made the first attempt at national income accounting your options are professor d r gadgil option b simon kuznet option c j m keens and option d gregory king now the correct answer is option d gregory king now gregory king is often credited with making the first attempt at national income accounting he was an english economist who published a work titled natural and political observations and conclusions upon the state and condition of england in 1696 inhone 1696 mein ek वर्क पब्लिश किया था जिसको हम लोग नेचुरल एंड पॉलिटिकल ऑब्जर्वेशंस एंड कंक्लूशंस ऑन दी स्टेट एंड कंडीशन ऑफ इंग्लैंड के नाम से जानते हैं इन दिस वर्क ही मेड एन एफर्ट टू एस्टिमेट नेशनल इनकम एंड एक्सपेंडिचर इन इंग्लैंड और राइट सो नेशनल इनकम की अकाउंटिंग का सबसे पहला स्टेप ग्रेगर किंग ने नाइन में लिया था for accounting or estimating national income of england while professor d r gadgil simon kuznets and j m keats made significant contribution in the fields of economics and development of national income accounting they are not the first to attempt it gregor king's work predates their contribution so the correct answer is option d now moving on to next question that is calculation of national income at market prices is known as ab national income ko market prices pe jab hum log calculate karte hain to hum log ise kis naam se jante hain aur options are money income real income non monetary income and option d none of these so amongst the options given the correct answer is option a that is money income so calculation of national income at market prices is known as option a money income now how does this calculation takes place the calculation of national income at market price refers to measuring national income by considering the value of goods and services produced and sold in the market at their respective market prices it takes into account the actual monetary transaction that occur in the economy now money income represents the income received in the form of money that is money income whether it is in the form of wages salaries profits rent or any other monetary payment it is most common and widely used measure of income in national income accounting on the other hand real income refers to the purchasing power of income after adjusting for inflation or changes in the price level it takes into account the impact of prices price changes on the value of income 
Moving on to non-monetary income. Non-monetary income refers to income received in non-monetary forms such as goods or services received in kind, barter, transaction or any other non-monetary means of payment. Therefore, the correct answer is the calculation of national income at market prices is known as option A, that is money income. Now moving on to next question that is accounting of national income at constant price is known as. Now what does the accounting of national income at constant price is called? Your options are option A money income, option B real income, option C current income and option D domestic product. So the correct answer is option B real income. Accounting for national income at constant prices is known as real income. Real income kya hota hai? Real income refers to the income measured in terms of constant purchasing power or constant value regardless of changes in the price level over time. It adjusts to the effects of inflation and deflation by using a fixed price index or base year to calculate the value of goods and services. On the other hand, money income it represents the income received in the form of money. As mentioned earlier, correct, uh, current income is a, not a specific term used in this context. The domestic income refers to total income generated within a country's borders irrespective of price and adjustments. Therefore, the correct answer is that accounting of national income at constant prices is known as real income. Now the next question is, the first Indian conference on research in national income was organized by. So, conference, India ki first conference on research in national income kis ne organized ki thi? Your options are option A, Central Statistical Organization or CSO, option B, National Sample Survey Organization, option C, Prime Minister and option D, National Statistical System. The correct answer is option A that is Central Statistical Organization or CSO. So the first Indian conference on research in national income was organized by Central Statistical Office Organization or CSO. The CSO is a part of Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation in India and is responsible for con conducting or coordinating statistical activities and maintaining statistical standards in the country. It plays a significant role in the compilation and analysis of national income and related statistics in India. So the correct answer is option A, CSO. Now moving on to next question that is economic survey is published by. Now aapka jo India ka economic survey hota hai, Usse kaun publish karta? Your options are option A, Ministry of Finance, Planning Commission, Government of India and Indian Statistical Institute or ISI. So among the given options, the correct answer is option A, that is Ministry of Finance. So economic survey is published by Ministry of Finance of Government of India. It is an annual document. Aapka jo economic survey hota hai, ek annual document hota hai that represents the economic analysis and performance of the country. Economic survey provides an overview of the state of the Indian economy, key economic indicators, policy recommendations and analysis of various sectors and issues. It serves as a valuable source of information for policy makers and economists. researchers and the general public. So it is handled by Ministry of Finance and published by Ministry of Finance of Government of India. Now next question, the Office of the Coordination and Publication Division is located at? Your options are Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore and Jaipur and the correct answer is option A, Delhi. Aka Coordination and Publication Division ka office Delhi me situated. Now moving on to next question. 
the Central Statistics Office or CSO in the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation is responsible for the compilation of. So your options are option A National Account Statistic, option B Indian Statistical System, option C Statistical Data and option D none of these. So this question uh, is I guess previously discussed. So the correct answer is option A that is National Accounts Statistics. Now Central Statistics Office or CSO in the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation is responsible for compilation of national accounts statistics. The CSO plays a crucial role in collecting, organizing, analyzing and presenting statistical data related to the national accounts of India. This includes measuring and estimating key macroeconomic indicators such as GDP, आपका GDP आ जाता है इसमें या GNP आ गया या gross national income आ गया savings आ गया investments आ गया and other economic aggregates. The NAS provides comprehensive information on the overall economic performance and the structure of country. So the correct answer is option A, national accounts statistics. Now moving on to next question. The CSO is located in. So this one was also previously discussed. So CSO is located in. Your given options are option A, Delhi, option B, Mumbai, option C, Jaipur and option D, Kolkata. So your CSO is in Delhi mein, uh, situated in Delhi. Now moving on to next question, National Sample Survey Organization or NSSO is an organization of, yani jo aapka NSSO hai, wo kis cheez ka organization hai? Your options are option A, Indian Statistical Institute, option B, NSSO, option C, ASO and option D, CSO. So the correct answer is option D, CSO. The National Sample Survey Organization is an organization that operates under umbrella of Central Statistical Office. The CSO is a part of Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation in India. NSSO is responsible for conducting large-scale sample surveys to collect data on various socio-economic aspects of the population in India. These surveys provide valuable insights into income, employment, consumption patterns, poverty, education and health and thus important indicators. Therefore, the NSSO or National Sample Survey Organization is an organization of the CSO. Now moving on to next question that is GNP at MP equals 2. Your options are GDP at MP minus depreciation. GDP at MP plus depreciation, GDP minus depreciation, GDP at MP plus net factor income from abroad. So the correct answer is option D that is GDP at MP plus net factor income from abroad. Now GNP stands for gross national product which is a measure of total value of goods and services produced by a country's resident both domestically and abroad yani jo bhi country ke citizens hain chahe wo domestically country mein reh rahe ho ya abroad se income generate kar rahe ho usse matlab nahi hai it measures the value of both during a specific period gnp at mp refers to gnp at market prices which takes into account national price of goods and uh, market price of goods and services now the formula for calculating uh, GNP at MP involves GDP at MP that is gross domestic product at market prices with net factor income from abroad. GDP at MP represents total value of goods and services produced within a country regardless of whether they are produced by residents or non-residents. Net factor income from abroad represents the income earned by a country's resident from their investment or work in foreign countries minus the income earned by foreign residents within the country. This is added to GDP at MP to calculate GNP at MP which includes both domestic production and net income from abroad. 
Therefore, the correct answer is that GNP at MP is equal to GDP at MP plus net factor income from abroad. Now, moving to next question that is NDP at FC equals to. Now, NDP at FC equals to what? Your options are GDP at FC minus depreciation, GDP plus net factor income from abroad, option C, NNP at factor cost plus net indirect taxes and option D, all of these. So, the correct answer is option A, that is GDP at FC minus depreciation. So, NDP at FC stands for net domestic product at factor cost, which is a measure of net value of goods and services produced within a country after accounting for depreciation. Now, the formula for calculating NDP at FC is NDP at FC equals to GDP at FC minus depreciation. GDP at FC represents the gross domestic product at factor cost which is the total value of goods and services produced within a country's borders before accounting for depreciation. Alright, now depreciation refers to the reduction in the value of capital goods due to wear and tear or obsolescence. It is subtracted from the GDP at FC to obtain NDP at FC, which provides a measure for the net output after accounting for the depreciation of capital goods. Net factor income from abroad and net direct taxes are not directly involved in the calculation of NDP at FC, so option B and C are not correct. Therefore, the correct answer is option B. A, that is GDP at FC minus depreciation. Now moving on to next question, NNP at FC equals 2. Now your options are GNP at FC minus depreciation, NDP at FC plus net factor income from abroad, NNP at FC plus net indirect taxes and option D, all of these. Now the correct answer is Option D, that is all of these. Now, NNP at FC stands for net national product at factor cost, which is a measure of net value of goods and services produced by countries resident, accounting for depreciation and net factor income from abroad. The calculation of NNP at FC can be done or derived using the following formulas. At first, we are going to talk about option A, that is GNP at FC minus depreciation. Now, net national product or NNP can be obtained by subtracting depreciation from gross national product or GNP. GNP represents the total value of goods and services produced by a country's resident, including income earned from abroad. Option B, NDP at FC plus net factor income from abroad. Now, NNP at FC can also be calculated by adding net domestic product at factor cost plus net factor income from abroad. Now, net factor income from abroad includes income earned by countries resident from their investment or work in foreign country minus the income earned by foreign residents within the country. Now, let's talk about option C, that is NNP at FC plus net indirect taxes. Now, NNP at FC can also be obtained by adding net national product at factor cost with net indirect taxes. Net indirect taxes are taxes imposed on goods and services, services excluding subsidies. Therefore, all of the provided options contribute to the calculation of NNP at factor cost. Hence, the correct answer is option D, all of these. Now, the process, uh, the next question that is, the process in which a fixed number of observations are taken randomly from a larger population is called. Option A, time series. Option B, sampling. Option C, index number. And option D, None of these. So, वो कौन सा process होता है जिसमें हम लोग एक fixed number of observations को randomly collect करते हैं from from a larger population. 
So the correct answer is option B that is sampling. Now sampling is the process of selecting a, sub a subset of observations or individuals from a larger population in order to gather information or make inferences about the entire population. In sampling, a fixed number of observations known as a sample is taken randomly or systematically from the population of interest. Now, sampling is a commonly used technique in statistical analysis and research. It allows the researchers to collect data efficiently and make inferences about the population based on the characteristics observed in the sample. अब जैसे कि आपका पॉपुलेशन है जिसमें 500 लोग हैं अब इन 500 में से आपको सैंपल लेने हैं तो ये डिसाइड होता है कि हम लोग 100 का सैंपल लेके चलेंगे ऑल right, तो इसी 500 के ग्रुप में से 100 लोगों का सैंपल कलेक्ट किया जाता है रैंडमली इसमें से हो सकता है 80 फीमेल्स हो 20 मेल्स हो या फिर थर्टी स्टूडेंट्स हों एक्सेट्रा ऑल राइट सो सैम्पलिंग इज द प्रोसेस इन विच अ फिक्स नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन आर टेकन रैंडमली from a larger population now let's move on to next question now our next question is limited in which all units of the universe are given an equal chance of being selected in the sample is known as now sampling mein kya tha ki koi bhi randomly select hota tha now ab ye kaun sa method hai jisme jitni bhi units hain universe ke unko equal chance diya jata hai ek sample ke taur pe select hone ka your options are option a probability sampling option b non probability sampling option c simple random sampling and option d systematic sampling now the correct answer is option c that is simple random sampling Now, simple random sampling is a method in which each unit or element in the population has an equal or independent chance of being selected as a sample. It involves randomly selecting individuals or items from the population without any bias or specific criteria. In simple random sampling, every member of the population has the same probability of being included in the sample. and the selection is made entirely by chance this ensures that the sample is a representative of the population and helps to minimize potential biases okay so the correct answer is option c simple random sampling now let's move on to next question that is a sample is selected from different homogeneous strata or parts of a universe instead of a heterogeneous universe as a whole your options are option a probability sampling option b non probability sampling option c simple random sampling and option d stratified random sampling so the correct answer is option d that is stratified random sampling Now what is stratified random sampling it is a sampling method in which the population is divided into homogeneous subgroups or strata based on specific characteristics or attributes now this strata are created to ensure that each subgroup represents a particular segment or category of the population ab koi population hai 500 logo ki 500 mein ye ho jata hai ki 100 jo hai wo old age hai they are 80 plus 150 are uh, youngsters youngsters that means uh, students or children below age of 15 200 are women 100 are men etc so in basis pe aapka sample uh, jo hai divide hota hai now which within each stratum a random sample is then taken using a suitable sampling technique such as simple random sampling or systematic sampling size of sample taken from each stratum is proportional to the size or importance of that stratum in the overall population now stratified random sampling is a form of probability sampling as it involves random selection within each stratum okay har stratum se koi bhi ek random selection aapka hoga 
It is particularly useful when the population is diverse and contains distinct subgroups that differ in important characteristics. By sampling from each stratum separately, it allows for a more precise estimation and better representation of the population. Therefore, the correct answer is option D, stratified random sampling. Now, let's move on to next question, which is, the study which is based on the parameters of population, where the units are selected by the researcher or some other expert on his or her judgment is called option A, quota sampling, option B, simple random sampling, option C, judgment sampling and option D, stratified random sampling. So the correct answer is option C, judgment sampling. Now judgment sampling is a non-probability sampling method where the researcher or another expert selects the sample units based on their judgment and expertise. In judgment sampling, the researcher identifies specific individuals or items that they believe are representative of the population or processes or possesses the characteristics of interest. So, judgment sampling is solely based on the judgment of researcher. So, the correct answer is option C, judgment sampling. Now, let's move on to next question that is, dash is the most commonly used non-probability sample design often used in consumer surveys. So, your options are option A, quota sampling, option B, simple random sampling, option C, judgment sampling sampling and option D stratified random sampling. So the correct answer is option A that is quota sampling. So quota sampling is the most commonly used non-probability sample design often used in consumer surveys. Quota sampling mein kya hota hai? The researcher selects participants based on specific quotas or predefined characteristics to ensure representation of certain subgroups in the Sample. Kuch characteristics ke basis pe aapke uh, researchers divide karte hain uh, participants ko and unke basis pe wo apne choices ko highlight karte hain choose karte hain like which sample are they going to take. The researcher sets quota for different demographic or other relevant characteristics such as the age, gender, occupation or location. Then they actively seek out the individuals who fit those quotas until they reach the desired sample size. It also allows for more control over the composition of the sample, ensuring representation from various segments of the population. Now, simple random sampling and stratified random sampling are both probability sampling methods which involve random selection of individuals from the population. Judgment uh, sampling, on the other hand, is a non-probability sampling method where the researcher selects units based on their own judgment and expertise. Hence, the correct answer is option A, that is quota sampling. Moving on to next question, which of the following items are excluded from GNP measurement? Now, GNP measurement, which items are excluded from GNP measurement? So, your options are purely financial transactions, option B, transfer of used goods and non-market goods and services and C, illegal activities and value of leisure and option D, all of these. So, the correct answer is option D, that is all of these. All of these activities or items are excluded from the calculation of GNP. Now, when measuring GNP or gross national product, all the mentioned items are typically excluded from the calculation and why they are excluded it is because let's talk about the first option that is purely financial transactions. Now purely financial transactions such as stock market trades, bond purchases or currency exchanges do not represent the production of goods or services. They involve transfer of financial assets and do not contribute directly to the economic output. So, they are not included in GNP. 
Moving on to option B, that is transfer of used goods and non-market goods and services. Now, GNP focuses on the production of new goods and services during a specific time period. The transfer of used goods does not involve current production and is therefore excluded. Similarly, non-market goods and services which are produced for personal use or within households are also excluded from GNP measurement. Now the third option that is illegal activities and value of leisure. Illegal activities such as black market transaction or illicit trade are not considered legal economic activities and they are not included in GNP. Additionally, value of leisure or personal time is not considered as a part of economic output and is therefore excluded from GNP calculations. Therefore, all the mentioned items are excluded from GNP measurement. To ensure that GNP reflects the value of productive economic activities within a given time period. Now moving to next question that is the subject of study of macroeconomics is. Now your options are option A principle of national income, option B principle of consumer, option C principle of producer and option D none of these. So the correct answer is option A that is principle of national income. So the subject of study of macroeconomics is option A principle of national income. Now macroeconomics is a branch of economics that focuses on the behavior and performance of economy as a whole. This deals with the aggregate economic phenomena such as national income, inflation, unemployment, economic growth and the overall functions of market and industries. One of the central subject of study in macroeconomics is the principle of national income. It involves understanding and analyzing the factors that determine the total output and income of a country as well as the methods used to measure and evaluate national income and its distribution. The study of macroeconomics also encompasses other important topics such as aggregate demand and supply, fiscal and monetary policies, international trade, etc. Therefore, the correct answer is option A, the principle of national income. Now with this, this video comes to an end. These are some important exam booster MCQs which are quite important for the point of view of your semester exams in BCom 6th semester. Now students, uh, if you have any problem, any queries, uh, you can ask us in the official group. Do subscribe our channel, do share our videos and uh, do not forget to download our mobile app. वहाँ पे अगर आप जब ये मोबाइल ऐप डाउनलोड करेंगे आपको सारे जो एम हैं जो एग्जाम बूस्टर्स के आपके एम आपको हम लोग थ्रू वीडियो प्रोवाइड कर रहे हैं ये पूरे कंप्लीट एम सी क्यूज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ पी आपको हमारे ऑफिशियल ऐप पे प्रोवाइड किए जाएंगे सो एनी कन्फ्यूजन एनी प्रॉब्लम्स आप लोग प्लीज उन्हें मैंशन करिए वी विल ट्राई टू सॉल्व देम एज सुन एज पॉसिबल बट Please do subscribe our channel, share our videos, download our app and thank you.